Hello, I'm Ed Locke with USA Mortgage. Tax season is upon us. Did you know that 47% of Americans are planning to use their tax refunds for everyday expenses, home improvements, and vacations? What if you used your tax refund for a new home instead? Again, this is Ed Locke with USA Mortgage. Your tax refund can be used towards down payment, closing costs, or paying down existing debt to help get approved. So before you spend that tax refund, let's get together and see how to best utilize those funds to invest in your future and your new home. Call or text me at 502-680-0953. Again, that's 502-680-0953. NMLS ID 448-908, DAS Acquisitions, LLC. Doing business as USA Mortgage, NMLS ID 227262. This is not a commitment to lend. Additional terms and conditions apply. USA Mortgage is an equal housing lender. You have scoured the podcast world. You have finally found the place where news is weighed in the balance. Welcome to Newsworthy with Stephen Jerry. Two words and two question marks. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Newsworthy. What a big chuckle. <laughs> That's hilarious. Jerry literally just put our wine. An entire bottle of wine into two glasses. <laughs> These wine glasses were made the right way. Yeah, they're, they're big. Old, half a bottle of wine. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Sorry about that. And it's not just any wine. What is it? What are we drinking tonight? Welcome Very to Newsworthy. Good. Sorry. Red Moscato. So a cold red wine. Cold sweet red. Behringer, by the way, was one of the first wines that I ever started drinking, probably 15, 18 years ago. Well, it's tasty. I like Behringer. Very tasty. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right. I'm going to adjust the sound just a little bit. I feel like I'm screaming in here. So, how was your week, Jerry? It was very nice. The weather is cooperated and warmed up. In the mid 50s, so very nice weather for January here in central Kentucky. Oh, I'm aware of how nice it was the last couple of days. I got on some two wheel action. Gosh, that's loud. Sorry. Got the bike set on. Yeah, had to. I'm trying to get, we, we kind of old school. Jerry is over here. He's got a laptop, he's got his phone, and he is very like, detailed and tech oriented and that's beautiful and i've over here got like six stacks of paper and that's what you hear rustling i apologize <laughs> it's okay though i you know i don't care at least with the paper you don't have to worry about is the computer going to come on or is it going to be locked into a loop or right right not wanting to ever let you in but yeah well no i've got that my other laptop that we used to run the show on is that way right now it's completely just blue i don't know what's wrong with it um uh, hey double we're glad you're here we missed you last week double is a a workaholic and had to do a double last week so she missed our show it made me very sad faced i'm glad she was able to make it this week yeah, so Jerry, real quick, tell people how they can get a hold of us. We haven't checked the email in like two weeks. I haven't checked. Have you checked? Well, email? I don't even have access to it anymore because you changed the password on it to one time. Oh, I did, didn't I? So Oops. I can't. Which I'm not that sad about, but especially after you encourage people to send feedback, <laughs> okay, it's fine. You check it yourself. But yeah, they have a couple of options. They can email us at newsworthy with steve and jerry at gmail.com they can also text us at area code 540-709-1318 so um real quick last week we came over you came over and we were here in the studio and we were trying to figure out how to do the call in and to make that work and and that whole system work out and 
um, something we, we tried to do it on a closed session and right. that didn't work um, because it, it it wasn't a real test, I don't think. So then we went live on the air just, right. you know, without any anticipation that anyone would actually join the show. And we ended up having two people from South Africa join. Two very interesting people. Very interesting people. Um, and I think we made a couple of good friends down there. And it. So. Uh, <laughs> we even hope that we can bring one or both on the show at some point. And, uh, yeah, some interesting people. You know, they brought up a few points that made me take another look at what you and I usually talk about. If you had to sum up what you and I are usually doing, I would think the best way to do it is we're probably bitching about United States government in some form or fashion. We're not happy with whatever. And uh, I forget what it was that you mentioned, and the lady said, uh, yeah, we have those problems here, only we have no way to do anything about it because the biggest problem here is corruption. Yeah, they're just taking all the money and putting it in their pocket. Well, what we were talking about, what she was bringing up that she wanted to talk about if she ever got the chance to come on the right. show, right. was the rolling, the mandatory brownouts that they have and actual blackouts for lots of time with electricity. Ongoing. Ongoing. Not an emergency. No. Occasionally, every once in a while in the middle of the summer when the weather in California is 118 degrees, we'll have those in California for a few hours, you know, in the hottest days. They go through this on a routine basis. Right. Can you imagine in America, we have such abundance. Yep. You know, you by far are one of the biggest food hoarders I've ever met. Um, two deep freezes, just chuck full, your freezer's full, pantry's your pantry stocked. stocked. Imagine having to shut your power off yeah. three hours a day every, that, right? every you just can't keep any fresh food that you the can butcher shop she specifically mentioned she said a lot of them they either can't afford the generators uh to buy and they can't afford the fuel because this is again this is not something that happens two or three times a year in the middle of the hottest days of the summer it's an everyday this thing for happens them. all the time and she was actually blown away that in america we had anywhere in yeah. the nation that still even had those issues. Yeah. So, you know, it'd be really great to get her on and get yeah. get get chatting. We got some great guests coming up very soon. Uh, part of the reason we was working on that online, trying to get people to call in. We have um, Ron, who's going to be joining us from Montana. Uh, he is uh, relevant to us. And, and what he, he, as much as you're a food hoarder, this man's a prepper. And he is, and I'm not talking about somebody who has an extra bag of potatoes stored away in the, in the it, he's got an actual whole basement that is sectioned off for different parts of survival, tanning, uh, iron and metal working. Uh, I talked to him, had a real good conversation. I uh, can't wait to get him on just to, you know, talk about a little bit about, say somebody wanted to start prepping for what they call shit hitting the fan. <laughs> Um, or as you call it, the World War Three that everyone is pushing us towards. Oh, absolutely. I still believe that. You can laugh all you want to. I still think that that's where I'm we're heading. Um, smile, but not <laughs> but uh, so we're going to have him on very soon. Um, at some point in March, uh, Clay Davis will be joining us again. again. Uh, we're going to be talking about a huge problem that's started a few years ago as a rumbling and it's actually getting some traction now especially with states that are becoming more and more divisive um and we're going to be talking about secession so can't wait to have that on also going to have uh, a a another lady on kylie she's going to come on and she's going to talk about a very dark topic um something that we've kind of touched on in the past but from a different perspective what it's like to be a a, a child growing up with parents who are addicted. Um, and that's, that's all, it's going to be a, a, a miserable, so we're going to, we're going to chit chat with her and try to get a, a feel for what that is and what that's like. So a lot of guests coming up. Can I add something real quick? You can add whatever you'd like, Jerry. You brought up something that uh, I hadn't thought of in some time. If you really want to be encouraged, if you want to see a video that, it's just an outstanding video. Google T 
10-year-old blind autistic boy singing Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. It's uh, the guy's uncle comes on and introduces him. He says that his uh, nephew was born to drug-addicted parents. And he, within the first, I don't think he even left the hospital with mom. He was taken into foster care. And he went down months or so. <clears throat> excuse me. And adopted him out of foster care in Florida. And this 10-year-old boy sings, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Please open the eyes of my heart. Blind, autistic. Uh, yeah. You talk about an humbling song. A very encouraging song. It's just, yeah. An awesome video. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've never watched a video. Things like that make me put me into a spot that I don't like being in. To be blunt, um, why? Huh? I, trust me. I mean, if you want, it, I understand what you're saying. It yeah. will make you feel so humble. It'll make you feel so guilty of why am I complaining? Right. But at the same time, if you want to see it, the evidence of God working in someone's life, watch this video. Yeah, just watch it. Absolutely. Sounds like you're good. Will you leave a link to that at the show? Um, good. Um, yeah, absolutely do that, man. Um, so, Jerry, guess what I don't have this week? What do you not have? A recipe? I don't have a recipe. Oh, yet. come on. But it's intentional. Really? Yes. Because okay. I got, I, I will. Um, so, this week, we got our very first box. And, and first of all, let me just say, we are not paid sponsors of HelloFresh yet. <laughs> That's kind of our judgment statement. We will know we've made it when we become sponsored by HelloFresh because they literally on every podcast, every uh, Facebook, you can't turn on anything without seeing an ad for HelloFresh. I thought it was the French wine company. Oh, there's that too. Yeah. Our barometer for <laughs> well, I, the wine companies don't have to advertise, I guess, as much. True. But uh, so what I did is I went ahead and ordered uh, a, a box of HelloFresh. Um, I'd heard about it, heard about it, and thought, you know, I'll give it a shot. And again, we're not paid. So this is straight from me to you. Uh, the first two meals I've already had, and both were absolutely amazing um now you and i have a lot of experience cooking so the instructions are very simple very easy to follow someone who's never picked up a tool in their life can cook these meals I agree. and they taste phenomenal absolutely so find you a code online somewhere order you a box of hello fresh um, i think we did three meals for four people um it was like 50 bucks for the first box and that was free shipping and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the, the, the produce is fresh. Um, I was concerned about that. I, I don't use click list because I like to pick my own vegetables. I like to get my hands on them, but fresh product, the, the, the meat is very high quality and the meals once done impeccable. I, I'm totally blown away. Very good recipes. Huh? Yeah, absolutely agree. So that's my recipe this week. I just wanted to plug HelloFresh for free. <laughs> the best thing I like about HelloFresh is the recipes. And uh, you can get those for free, by the way. If you just Google HelloFresh recipes, you can find them and make a screenshot or print the page or whatever. And that's the best thing that I love about them. You're right. You can get some outstandingly good deals if you have a good coupon code. The regular price gets pretty expensive. I think it's around eight, nine dollars per person per meal. Yeah. So a family of four is thirty six dollars for one meal. Yeah, that's meal, it. Bucks. Basically that's what it would cost you to go to McDonald's. I, who goes to McDonald's? You know, you and I have talked about it. Millions of people. <laughs> but I don't really understand why. No, I don't either. In today's world. I don't either. Orangeburg, Kentucky, we've got a sandwich place, a bakery that you and I have talked about different times called Heavens to Betsy. And they have outstandingly good food. And their price has not increased during COVID uh, or since COVID began. It's still roughly somewhere, you know, eight seventy five to ten fifty for a sandwich. And uh, you're spending that at McDonald's, and there's no comparison in the quality, the amount of food you get. Yeah, if you're in this area, heavens to Betsy. What's the name of the place up in Shelbyville that you and I went to one time that really loved the little sandwich shop? Very similar to, it's a bakery, I think. As well. Um... 
mid, I think it's just Shelbyville's Deli and Bakery. I'll Google that. I don't I remember. remember. Really good one. I thought they were as good as Seven for but Since we're on food and local food that's good, um, right here in Lawrenceburg, also Big Jack's Cafe. I, I'm not a huge fan of their sandwiches, but they have amazing breakfast burritos. Oh, my gosh. Um, Very good to know. Yeah, um, and, and there's lots of good restaurants here in Central Kentucky. So McKinley's if you ever Cafe. McKinley's Cafe, Shelby. If, if you guys ever, if anyone ever wants to come to Lar- or Central Kentucky, um, just shoot us a text, shoot us a email. We'll get you all the good spots, the local spots that uh, you're not going to find on Yelp or TripAdvisor, because I go to a lot of places there. So anyway. Anyway, so no uh, recipe, recipe, just a HelloFresh recommendation. What about a dead joke? Tell me you got a great dead joke for us this week. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, wait, Jerry. Every dad joke I say is a good dad joke. I don't know what you so think. Many would disagree. No. I've got one you're probably going to. Get on me about. I'm going to run it by you to see if oh, it drops no. the line. But Here you go. It, so we'll just do it live and in person. Okay. <laughs> Fingers right. crossed here. Yeah, go ahead. I got in touch with my inner self today. You did? Yeah, I did. I decided I really need to start buying two ply tissue. <laughs> so, two parts. <laughs> I, we're going to stop the podcast right now. You need to go wash your hands. <laughs> you touch my wine glass with that hand. <laughs> oh, man. And working out all this technical stuff, Jerry, you know what I realized? That if you get slapped with a with something in high frequency, it hurts. Well, I'm sure it does. H-E-R-T-Z, it hurts. <laughs> Uh, you're cracking me up so so we get lots of stuff today we do um lots of things to get to jerry and i've already literally thrown things across my kitchen having dinner (laughs) blood pressure was up to that level literally um and so we're going to get into some of those things. Um, but first, Jerry, why don't you start us this time? I started last time. I'm going to take a chill. I'm going to gather myself. And, and I will actually try to do a light party wound, one that hopefully will lower your blood pressure a little bit. Uh, eh, it probably won't do that. Hopefully it won't raise it anyway. I know you're not a huge LeBron James fan. Last night, I'm sure you heard he broke. Freeman Bill Jabbar's record. He is now the all-time leading scorer in the NBA. Uh, I, I'm not a huge LeBron James fan myself. I've become much more a fan of his in the last, I don't know, three or four years. He's become more of a team player, I think. Still not a huge LeBron James fan. I'm a huge NBA fan. I'm a, a big fan of history, and he just broke a record that for so many years was considered to be unbreakable. And... Uh, LeBron James, as of last night, is the all-time leading scorer. Not only is he the all-time leading scorer, because you can do that by being a very selfish player. He became the first player in NBA history with 30,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, and 10,000 assists. He didn't do that last night. He said this one for a while. But when you think about it, 30,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, 10,000 assists, the only player ever, no one. Uh, when, When I first heard about it, I thought, you know, I'm sure Oscar Robertson, the big O, he was a very good rebounder, one of the great assist guys and a great scorer. I thought, surely he, he no. LeBron James is the only player to ever do this. So kudos, kudos to him. Absolutely. And I don't like LeBron. I don't like his politics. I don't like where he puts his opinions sometimes. Well, it's, not why we sport, it's really not. Um, and that's why I don't really care for him because he interjects it into the sport, you know, and that's any of those guys that do that, I'm kind of not a fan of. So does Kareem. Yeah, for no. known for social justice yeah. as well. Yeah, so, yep, yeah, definitely kudos to him, no doubt. Uh, it is a huge accomplishment. Um, and 
what, what can you say? Now, here's where I will draw the line. Okay. There's going to be comparisons now that say, oh, he's done this. That definitely means he's the greatest of all time. He's still got a long way to go to beat Mike, in my opinion. Sorry. But when you look at statistics, and I would agree with you from the sense that this is probably the biggest statistic, and that's number of rings, number of yeah. championships. Oh, yeah. That's the one place and the only one that I know of where Michael has still got him, unless you wanted to look at something like clutch shots. Or heart. Or heart. Or yeah. play. You know, uh, who yes. was – what was his – what was Michael's coach named Dean uh, uh, in college? Oh, Dean Smith. Dean North Smith. Carolina. Dean Smith said it best when he was talking about Mike one day, and I think this is what drove him to become what he was. He said all players have the ability to turn it on and off on a given night. You know, Mike did not have that. If Mike was on the court, be it practice, be it by himself, be it in a game, Mike was 120% until he was off the court. The only other person that I would put up there with him for that, from everything I've heard, is Kobe. Kobe oh, yeah, absolutely. Game. One and two by far, in my opinion. It didn't matter. Practice, playground. And if you weren't at his level, Kobe was a lot more like – and both of those guys, because of their mentality, made their home teams better because if you were going to play with them, they didn't need a, you didn't need a coach to tell them that, that you needed to step up because Mike going to be in your ear, Kobe's going to be in your ear. That's why him and Shaq didn't get along very well because Shaq was a big no – a lot of people knew Shaq as a person that – Yeah, he'd goof off and practice a lot, and that didn't sit well with Kobe. So – uh, I will apologize. My dogs are probably going to bark real soon. Ramona and Eddie and <laughs> Sonny Ray, Eddie. I apologize. Um, that reminded me of an old Pat Riley story, by the way. During the heyday of the Lakers, someone uh, was interviewing Pat Riley, and they mentioned, you know, you've got to have a really tough job. You've got Shaquille, you've got Kobe, you've got all these expectations. Uh, it's got to be a really tough job a lot of pressure and he said not really he said i just show up to work every day and say mr johnson what would you like to do today <laughs> magic johnson yeah and uh, somewhere along the line I, I never heard magic johnson being thought of as one of them like we're talking about but if you got a uh, magic <laughs> if you've got a michael jordan or you've got a kobe on the team yeah it becomes a lot easier yeah they do a lot of the coaching Steve Jordan, Kerr. <laughs> they don't allow the goof offs they're, they're going to insist on everybody bringing it. Yep, yep. So, kudos to Jordan. Yeah, absolutely. And to uh, – we didn't get off uh, LeBron. Kudos to LeBron, oh, for, LeBron sorry. for doing this thing. So, appreciate that. Absolutely. So, what do you got for us? Hopefully, it's not one that's going to elevate your blood pressure. Uh, well, I have one that won't elevate my blood pressure. <laughs> Only one. And only one. Do you want me to start with that or end with that? Up to you. Well, I'll start with it because scientists have officially, now this is according to popular mechanics, have officially discovered hell on earth or rather hell in earth. Okay. According to scientists, at, there is an entire global area, a hundred miles deep of liquid magma, um, and how they didn't know this for a hundred years, I have no idea because it only makes sense. You know, uh, if you look at the earth, like a human, so it's got this magma under it and occasionally that, you know, a pimple will pop up and boom. And so you have a volcano, right? So it's got to come from somewhere, but they just discovered this that a hundred miles deep, there's about a 150 or 200 mile deep layer that's global of magma. And they've pretty much decided that that is hell in earth. <laughs> who just discovered this? A uh, scientist. It doesn't say in particular who, which scientist. I thought that was known for them. Too. I thought it was too, but apparently it was enough to make news this week. And okay, that's newsworthy. <laughs> Must have been in North Korea. Oh my gosh, North Korea. Oh, Here goes the blood pressure. North Korea. So Kim Jong-un has not been seen for 36 days. Okay. So anytime that happens, automatically they people assume he's dead because he, he eats like, 
you know, a he eats and, and is very unhealthy with his food and his intake and his so when he's not seen for 36 days, people assume he's dead. Well, he pops up yesterday and says it has a very short press conference and basically tells his people to prepare for war. Didn't say against who, didn't say as to what. But then in the same token, I read an entirely different re- uh, report on North Korea that they are literally having the second worst, uh, what is that called, food insecurity that they've had in, in, in 100 years. And they've had a lot. Yeah. And this is going to be, they're leading into their second worst one because the, the crops that they did run were damaged last year due to a typhoon and flooding. And uh, there was a whole lot of, of course, the sanctions that everybody has against them. They're quibbling a little bit with China, which is their only economic lifeline because of their nuclear ambitions. And, and at this point, they are a nuclear country. They have enough nuclear warheads to say, we have to deal with them as a nuclear country. There's no reason for their people to starve. <laughs> That's the sad part. You know, exactly. I mean, these people who are brainwashed, in effect, um, by the control of the media, by control of their, their day-to-day life, the amount of government in their day-to-day lives doesn't the allow of execution for- if they don't. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't allow for a lot of free thought and free will in North Korea. At what point do we have to say, okay, what we've tried to do hasn't worked. Their people are starving. How do we fix that? And I don't know what the answer is. I mean, period. I mean, do we we know it wouldn't take more? Do we have to send in like SEAL Team Six and take out the leadership and? But see, the problem is these people are so brainwashed that they, accept? That they would right. accept that. Yeah, I, I don't know that that's the case. Them. You really yeah. would. So I don't um, know. Yeah. Anywho. That's not an easy one. They weren't even on my list today. You brought that up. <laughs> but I did see those two reports. They were going to go on my list. And I was like, ah, I'm so tired of talking about North Korea. But your heart has to go out for these people. I mean, they, they don't know any better. And now they're going to be resorting to... Once again, eating tree bark because they're starving to death. You know, back when I was a retail manager, I worked for this company that was based in Abilene, Kansas. Um, It was Duckwall Alco. I don't even know if it still exists. Uh, Last time I heard, I got a check from Shopco because they bought it, but I don't know what happened to it after that. But um, long story short, in Abilene, Kansas, they gave us a tour of the town. And that is where they make these wafers. And the wafers are basically called gruel. And it's a mixture of oats and corn and brown sugar, molasses. And basically, you can eat this as is. It's crunchy. It tastes like barf, solidified. But you can eat it. It has nutrients. Um, Or you can dissolve it in water. And or you can make bread out of it, eleven bread out of it, and that's what we sent to Africa for all of those years during all those many many famines because they it was such a diverse um, material. Um, but why we we don't ship this in and just drop it, airdrop it all over North Korea? I don't understand. These people have because we have a beef with their government. We have to understand that those people are not in a position to stand up against their government. Sure. I, I don't know. I don't. I, mean, I wouldn't even bring that up. dropping. I mean, we're going to violate their. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, yes, we are. I guess you're right. I mean, it would. Rec- and but who do you get to do it? Because they're going to be shooting at the planes that attempt to. No, you're them. right. You're you're right. And I don't know if that's the answer. By the I, way, to answer your question, according to Wikipedia. Alco Stores, formerly Duckwall Alco, was a retail chain operating 198 stores in 23 states. Keyword was. Yeah, so it's As gone. of March 23rd, 2015, they are defunct. I actually enjoyed that company. I worked for them when I moved out west. That's what I was working for. Um, it was a great job. I got to go and any, they were kind of like a big dollar general. So... Um, my job was to go in to stores where a Walmart had opened and see if the store was still viable. 
they weren't designed to compete with Walmart. They were designed to be a big fish in a small pond. Yeah. Um, and that's why it led me to living in so many states out west and, and just had a blast when I worked for them, to be honest. But um, I figured yeah, they were I remember you telling a few stories. It sounded like it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to talk about those on air, Jerry. <laughs> oh, man. To all my friends in Salmon, Idaho, if any of y'all pick up this podcast, I love you. I just love you. I love your hearts. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. What's your next topic, man? George Santos. Oh, what do boy. you think about the guy? Man, I think... I'm just going to say it. Okay. If he was a Democrat, we wouldn't be having this conversation. That's what I would think about this guy. Meaning what? Meaning the Democrats are very good at getting these crazy, lying people elected and then circling the wagons around them. Like who? Give an example of who you're referring to. Uh, crazy people on the left? A Democrat, lying person that they Oh, anybody the that's been in Congress more than 10 years. Really? <laughs> you seriously believe that? I, I think you have to lie with you. No, no. We he's not he's leftist. He's crazy. A, he's an independent. The uh, anyway, George Santos. If it were up to you, what would you do? If, if I were, him? if I were uh, you're McCarthy, McCarthy right now, yeah, I, I, I would make him go away. Probably he needs to. And I don't know that. I do know. He does not have that power by himself. He certainly would have to bring this to a vote among the people. But anyway, the reason this come to mind was I was watching the State of the Union last night. And for those of you who happened to see uh, a few minutes before the beginning of the State of the Union address, Romney and a few other people were on their way into the, the House. And for some unknown reason, probably just the way that it fell, George Santos was given a aisle seat. So he was not only sitting on the aisle, he was standing up and enthusiastically welcoming everyone into the chamber, shaking hands with everyone that he possibly could. And apparently this just rubbed Mitt Romney the wrong way. I'm no Mitt Romney fan, but Me I'm a huge either. fan of his response. He walked up to George Santos. I didn't walk up to him as he's walking down the aisle to his seat. He passed him. And when uh, George Santos attempted to shake his hand, he said to him, you don't belong here. And it appeared that he also said, you should be embarrassed. They proceeded to have a discussion. Uh, Santos called him an asshole. I I'm glad someone stood up and told George Santos what they thought of him. And I was also glad that it was a member of his own party, another Republican. If it's not, if it had come from a Democrat, it would have been perceived as just being another partisan move, another partisan hack. And there's so much of that. But this was a Republican talking to another Republican. For those of you who are not familiar with George Santos, after he was elected, he has did to, as he says, um, what well, was he said? He's embellished. Admitted, that's the word. He's so, embellished his record. He hasn't record. admitted to lying. He said that he has embellished his record in a few cases. Here's some of the things that he has actually admitted to doing. <laughs> he has lied about the high school that he attended, the college that he attended. He, on his website that he created when he was running for office, he stated that he had graduated with a degree in economics and finance from Baruch College. And he also said that he was a star on the volleyball team. He later admitted that he had never applied for, much less attended the school, or any college for that matter. He lied about his resume and said that he had worked for Goldman Sachs and Citigroup on Wall Street. Both companies say that they have no record of his ever being employed with them. He lied about founding an animal charity. He, while running for New York's 3rd Congressional District in November, his campaign bio discussed his husband. Now, his husband has never been seen in public with it. There's no marriage record of the husband. We do know that in 2019, he did divorce a woman in Queens. He wrote in Twitter that the September 
11 attacks, the 9-11 attacks, had cost his mother her life. Then a few years later, he wrote on Twitter, on December 23rd, 2021, he said that it was the fifth anniversary of his mother's passing, which would mean that she passed away in 2016, uh, which is confirmed by her obituary, which was 15 years after 9-11. He's lied about his grandmother being a Holocaust victim. In an interview following his election, he said that he had lost four employees in the Pulse nightclub shooting. None of the 49 victims at the Orlando Club had ever worked for any company that he claims to have founded, worked for, or been involved with. This guy just, Steve summed it up well. He apparently just a pathological liar. He lies about everything. Um, but yeah, when you're lying about the credentials that enable you to get your elected office, as far as I'm concerned, I think they probably need to see that this guy goes away, especially in my opinion, because of something you said a minute ago. The Republicans claim to have the moral high ground, right? They claim to be the moral party, the party that tries to do things right. You can't allow a guy like this to be in your party after lying about everything in his life, apparently. So, not a positive one, but hopefully not one that got your blood pressure up anyway. Well, politicians lie. Sure. That's what they do. If it's not lying to get elected, it's lying to stay elected. And... I have another politician here. Can I have one more thing? Sure. Before we move on. Sure, 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 sure. Glad you brought that up. Romney had a great saying today when I heard he was doing an interview and they asked him about his confrontation with Santos. And Romney said this. He said, Santos says that he has embellished his record. Claiming you got an A when you actually got an A minus or a B plus, that's an embellishment. But when you claim you graduated from college, even though you never attended, that's not an embellishment. That's lying, and I absolutely agree. Many, many, if not most politicians would absolutely embellish their record. If you heard the State of the Union last night, you heard the President of the United States many times embellish his own record. That's a far cry from what George Santos is doing. George Santos is not embellishing. He's absolutely outright lying. Yep. So, your turn. Yeah, well, I was just going to say that uh, there's a, a bigger name politician that has been notorious for lying throughout his career. And that would be our president, Joe Biden. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder there. Oh, no, you didn't. Um, absolutely not. Um, and, and it's the same types of little things that I don't understand why you want to lie about. What what difference well, it makes. I agreed. Half of it with Biden, I don't even think it's lying. I think the man... He's probably suffering from... Well, this has happened over his whole career. Dementia. Um, Biden once said that he was in a congressional player baseball game where he hit a ball 358 feet. Um, pretty good. That's pretty darn pretty good. good. Against the Dodgers, mind you, okay. of Los Angeles. And the rumor report is he went 0-2. <laughs> um, when did they play the Dodgers? Uh, it was Congress team. They uh, actually played the Dodgers. That's what it says. Uh, it was against the Republicans in Memorial Stadium. I guess the Dodgers were in attendance. Okay. Um, so it was the annual. Yeah, yeah. It was the answer. Game. The one that uh, the got congressman shot got shot at. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, what's his name? Oh, I don't remember. Sicles. 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 Yeah. C L A I S. Yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember. Um, Biden also claimed that in the four years after the, the, the Obama administration, where he's vice president, that he went on to become a professor while he was gone, before he became the president of the United States. Uh, not a, he never taught, taught even the first class in that entire time. And this one's a little closer to my heart. Uh, a confused Biden once said that he used to drive an 18-wheeler. Um, he has never had an actual job outside of politics, period. Um, he was being totally honest last night when he looked around and said, I have been here as long or longer than most of you. Yep, true. absolutely. Um, he also went on to repeat that he used to drive a tractor trailer in a different factory that made parts. I think that was a caterpillar place. Um, 
He made up a he entirely made up a story about visiting Israel in 1967. That never happened. Uh, and he couldn't even remember his Secretary of Defense's name. <laughs> How much of this do you think is confusion? Oh, dementia. I think I think anything of the last five to six years is definitely some sort of How dementia. How much of this was before that? Um, several, a few things, and I don't, I didn't look at the dates of this stuff. This is just a report actually made to us by the Federalists, um, and even even at the State of the Union last night, he got confused about Chuck Schumer, which is right out of the gate. Well, so he did correct that. He did correct it. Um, he got back on script, which was good. But that was like one of the first few things that he said. Yeah. So anyway, um, my next thing, I have two things and they're both kind of big and they're both going to probably put us into no man's land. So I'm sorry about that going in. But the first one I have to bring up is the debt ceiling. Okay. How many, and I'm talking, now, this is Steve, the independent talking today. Okay. Because I want to put it out there that we need to stop raising the debt ceiling. Period. It has to stop. We are at 31 plus trillion dollars in debt right now. That's enough money that if every American paid $100,000. For the next, was it 300 years, we would never have that paid off without serious, I mean, that's paying, as credit cards say, the minimum payment. <laughs> we literally borrow over a million dollars every minute just to pay the interest on the debt that we owe. And I am so scared that we have this debt ceiling conference coming up with Joe Biden and Mike, Kevin McCarthy that this can is simply going to get kicked down the road again. It always is. It always is. When was the last time we had a balanced budget? Oh, I can't. I, I don't even know if I was alive. Oh, really? Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton. But it oh. took those days of prosperity during... <laughs> Excuse me. It took people like Newt Gingrich that had a set to make no, it happen. It took uh, Alan Greenspan. That's mm. what it took. It took an unparalleled economic prosperity period for us to be able to get there. Here's the thing. First of all, I want to say that that is really good wine. I told you. Very, very, very fantastic wine. I told you guys earlier that Jerry put literally half a bottle in each of our glasses. My glass is gone. <laughs> I'm not scared to say it. Um, so anyway, we have to we have to rein this in. This is stupid. Now, some of the Republicans came and said, and and you know these are guys that I normally support, the Freedom Caucus, and said, hey, we got to cut Social Security, we got to cut Medicare, we got to blah 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 blah, without touching de defense. And I am a big believer of all the programs that we have available that, that our government pays for. You don't touch Social Security. That's not your money. When Social Security was created, it was not a thing where the government was adding anything to that pot. That was American people working every day of their life, having that money taken out of their check for their retirement as a safety net at the end of their lives. And their employer matching. Absolutely. It was exactly. a employee, Absolutely. Employer, but government, nothing. Nothing. They're not contributing. The anything. only thing the government was going to do was to keep it, oversee it, oversee it and then give it back to the people when they reach the, the retirement age, I think 62, 65, whatever, whatever they decided back in the time. And since then, our government has pillaged, probed, taken, stolen, whatever you want to call, to the point that it's almost insolvent. Yep. Um, so when the Freedom Caucus comes at Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare, hands off. That's not your money. Now, in the defense of the Freedom Caucus, is very, very, very few members who are asking for the money to come from Social right. Security. Very few. Right. 
Now, our budget can be broken up into three things on the very barest, barest of scales. Now, it's very much more difficult and detailed than that. But if you just break it into a, a, a three sliced pie, you have the things that we can't change. Debt interest, um, payroll for the government workers. Debt interest, I thought, is not part of that. That's the third criteria. Okay. Interest on the debt. Right. Is Interest on the debt. Well, it's untouchable. You can't change it but unless you reduce the debt. Right. The, right. the second one is government expenses that are mandated. You know, we have to provide uh, payroll for the people that work for the government and benefits, blah, blah, blah. And then we have, well, it's four sided. So then you have the defense and then you have entitlements. So those are usually part of the uh, discretionary. Well, that's what I'm getting at. The, the entitlements and discretionary money, that all falls into one. The defense is totally separate. Well, there's discretionary, non-discretionary, and everything that I usually see it divided into three. It's discretionary, non-discretionary, and interest on debt. Yeah, well, there you go. Well, discretionary would include defense and entitlements. Um, and that's where we have been so afraid <laughs> of, of touching defense because oh look at you you're cutting defense you can do that in a smart way you absolutely can um you can even touch entitlements on a smart way yeah. and you're going to have to because the one thing you shouldn't be able to touch is social security and shame on the republicans for you know everybody that's mentioned it it's even brought it up that's not your money. That's Main Street. That's kitchen table money that they have put in and worked their whole life to put in. Totally agree. Um, so when you start talking about how are we going to cut to save under the debt ceiling, to save money, you got to look at defense. You got to look at entitlements. Defense is almost always out on a Republican just because they think that that's the only way the defense um, – you know, the, the big defense companies are going to have lobbyists in there that are just going to pay those people off. And that's unfortunate. It's one of the things term limits can fix. Entitlements, we have an opportunity to do what they did back under Clinton, welfare to work. They got rid of that program. Are you kidding me? You're going to penalize people for working? That's stupid. So I just really hope that some smart folks in Washington, come to the realization that we can smartly cut our defense budget and we can smartly cut entitlements. Entitlements, again, in my opinion, and I may be wrong, Jerry, do not include Social Security and Medicaid. Totally agree. Yeah. For some reason, it is normally included under welfare programs. It's money being given, but it is absolutely not an entitlement program. Mm -mm. It's money that has been earned. It's not just being given. So... Now, I say that with regards to traditional, old-fashioned Social Security. The reason Social Security <laughs> excuse me, got in trouble economically was two reasons. <coughs> so sorry. Number one, we began stealing from it, as you mm. mentioned. But also, we began paying many programs under Social Security like blind pensions. Jerry is <laughs> going to die for a second, so I'll take over. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's right. And what he's getting at there is we started doing things as Social Security that we had that was not part of the plan. Disability. Disability. Like that. That, yeah. That's not through Social Security. No, and not that me. should... That should come out of a different fund. Absolutely. That is a welfare. That is an entitlement. That is a safety net. And you know one of the other things that happened to Social Security? What's that? We started living longer. <laughs> Social Security was designed originally that we're going to retire at 62 and live to 65. So we got three years on it, and the rest of the money gets forfeited to the rest of the system. Well, health care has improved. Medicine's improved. And we're living to 75 and 80 now. And according to the numbers of the system when it was originally created, that's not the way it was supposed to work. <laughs> Just for the record, if anyone out there is listening. Well, you make some adjustments, but you don't 
suddenly take away uh, the benefits from the people who've been paying into it. Absolutely. Power. Absolutely. Also, I'm not a financial advisor, but when I turn 62, I'm taking as much money as they're going to give me because you're not guaranteed tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think you can take it at 62 anymore. No. No? Sure. It's been moved to 65. Uh, of course it has. I'm almost positive. Uh, I'll Google it while you talk. <laughs> We're talking about defense and how much we spend. The United States spends more than the next seven countries combined. Um, let me see what year I'm looking at here. 2021. The United States spent $801 billion. China, number two, spent 293. India, number three, spent $76 billion. United Kingdom, number four, at $68 billion. Russia, number five, at $65 billion. France, number six, $56 billion. We spend more than the next six or seven countries, I don't remember. Yeah, it's six crazy. It's a stupid amount. Combined. It's a stupid amount. You can't tell me we can't cut some from there. There's right. a lot of money. I, right. I agree with you. Herman, the, the late Herman Cain had, an, had a pretty oh, good plan. Like I did too. I mean, the man was a very smart, he was a businessman. He had done things in his life. Uh, and his was the penny plan. He cut two pennies of every dollar from everything in government. And eventually, that really adds up when you're talking about trillions of dollars. Two yeah, percent. Um, also, just for the record, Jerry, you can start receiving benefits as early as 62. However, you're not entitled to full retirement up until age 70. You so you get a, that applies to people today? That's what it says right here, according to four okay. sources. Benefits planner, and this is Social Security Administration.gov. Okay. I so, thought that had been changed, and the, man, the mandatory minimum had been moved to 65. No, I think the full benefits used to be at 65, and now they're 70. But, hey, who's guaranteed to live to 70? Yep. I'm not. I'm going to take my... My eight years as best I can. Shoot. <laughs> Anywho, sorry. There's lots of places to cut. Maybe we just do a whole show, Jerry, on what two people from Kentucky think they should do with the budget to save well, some money. Let's see how much we can cut and carve and make sense. Not would, today. Uh, it would vary from area to area, but I guarantee I know the bottom line result would be to cut the hell out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't care what the mating patterns of Canadian night crawlers are. True, but <laughs> those type of things do receive a lot of publicity. And Very little money, money going two, three hundred thousand dollars yeah. in the in the budget of a bit, you know, trillions. That's not a lot of money. I get no, that, but they and do add up. At the same point, our foreign aid is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, if we can talk about foreign aid, and we can talk about you know, do we give? I'll go to. A, Something that you get your blood pressure raised about quite often, Ukraine. The, the total amount of money, which is, I think, $100 billion, not that we've given, but that we have said we're going to give, that's still a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. If we hadn't given one dime of that, it would not change. It, if you were to do the math. It I, doesn't I, move I our needle. That. It won't move the needle. Yeah. If you take away the $100 billion that we gave to Ukraine, how much difference would it make in the interest on the national debt? It would be probably have you half of one penny. You were a TikTok, uh, um, not were video. Not was. Oh, still are. Ain't. You are a Chinese spy. <laughs> <laughs> um, they don't even know my name. <laughs> they don't have my address. They have nothing. But yes, I'm I'm giving national secrets to. Yes, you are. So um, you should Google the, or or find the video that um, the guy uses individual rice to. To show the the way the budget is, it's fascinating. I'm sorry. Find it and link it if you don't care, because okay. um, it is fascinating. If you if you want a real visualiz visualization of what kind of money trillions of dollars means, <laughs> it's it's an amazing video to watch. It, it will surely blow your mind. Jerry, that's all I want to talk about. I was I was hoping that we can get some real smart ways to not increase the debt ceiling again and reduce our federal budget. Why do you think that doesn't happen? Votes. Yep. Period. 
I mean, that's what it's trying to stay in office. And that's what, uh, you know, we, we beat it like a dead horse here, but term limits. <laughs> you know, our original reason for our show was to determine if things need more or less news coverage. That is one that needs more coverage than you can possibly give it. Absolutely. It's the fact that we are screwing our grandchildren's grandchildren's grandchildren yeah. is what we're doing with our national debt. Yeah, it's it. stupid. The and country literally cannot keep going in the route that we're on. Um, that's 100% correct. And, you know, I, it's one of those things I really think we should beat it and everybody should know exactly what we're talking about. But I don't ever want it to become one of those things where it's just, oh, they're talking about the debt again. You know what I mean? Sure. Because it, it deserves more than that. So two thumbs up on that. Definitely needs a lot yeah. more coverage, but moderated coverage. Real coverage, yeah. not partisan coverage. Not defense, not not Republican coverage or Democrat coverage. Some of the best quotes and best stains for the whole debt situation actually comes from the Libertarian Party. <laughs> yeah. and, and Joe Jorgensen, if she's on Twitter, if you don't follow her on Twitter, you should because she's firing it up. I don't know that I would vote for her, but she's firing it up when it comes to uh, the debt ceiling debate. You know, What's your next topic? People that, uh, well, before I go to the next topic, th there's a couple of problems with that. There's a ton of people who do, do not wish to hear negative news. And there's a lot of people, I think, that don't follow news very much at all to begin with because the majority of it is negative. Yep. So something like this is certainly negative. It's not the type of thing that you like to hear. Another problem, I think, is there's, there's a lot of people who don't like numbers, who don't like math. Yeah. You start hearing these numbers, and some of these numbers are pretty huge. You know, yeah. you're getting into trillions of dollars. People have no idea what that even yeah. means. And real quickly, when you begin talking about the current trajectory, what what is the what percent of GDP is the interest debt payment going to be in twenty years and forty years? A lot of people get lost. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like the old math joke of how many pancakes does it get to the moon? Does it take to get to the moon when the canoe is stuck in the tree with the satellites on? <laughs> and that's why a lot of people look at word math problems. Uh, raising my hand mm -hmm. here. I've never heard that old joke. <laughs> the last time I told that joke was in your kitchen, and you and Robin were there, and your answer was 21. And your wife said, 21? You was like, yeah, 22 is way too much. <laughs> it makes sense to me, I guess. I'll take yeah. it. <laughs> I think that's the reason a lot of people tune it out, but it's not something we can afford it to now. We absolutely, you all right over there? <laughs> I'll be fine. Okay. It sure. sounds like one of the dumbest things I've ever said in my life. <laughs> you got to admit, it also sounds like something you would absolutely say. Absolutely, yep. Yeah. So, what did you think about Biden's State of the Union? I know you were busy last night, had to get up early, and didn't get to watch near all of it. Yeah, you, you know. <laughs> It's it's a I'm going to summarize it what I did watch as best I can. It was a run of the mill state union. I've done all this, yay me, and we got more to do. Okay, yeah. here's what I didn't like about it. I didn't like the fact that it was almost like watching the House of Commons in Great Britain. You know, over the past several states of the union, starting probably George W., maybe even a little further back than yeah, that. Before. Um, well, that's when I really became aware of it. So um, that we have decided that it's okay that during this particular time, we're going to make political statements. I've always kind of understood the, hey, we're going to stand up on this one. We're going to sit down and, you know, the right left. I get that. But those were quiet. They were respectable. Um, this shouting and acting like a bunch of fools that only makes us to the rest of the world look stupid. So that's what I'll say about the state. Of Union. I, I, I just, you know, regardless, you and I have talked about it a lot, regardless who's in the white house, Democrat, Republican, 
They yeah. de- the office deserves respect. And when he's making a speech in front of both houses of Congress, that respect for the office, even if you don't agree with the guy saying that the respect should over, should, pardon the pun, trump whatever the guy's saying. Uh, and that's just really what I feel about and that. He didn't do a good job of it last night, but to defend Republicans, they certainly didn't start this process. No, nope, nope. they didn't start it last night. No, nope. I don't know who started it. It's been going on for a long time. I will say this: Kevin McCarthy was did a fantastic job and was one hundred percent respectable in everything he did last night. Mm-hmm. He deserved a lot of kudos. I say that in contrast with Nancy Pelosi. I don't know if it was the last one, but in one of the the State of the Union addresses with Trump, do you remember what she did when he came in? He walked up and handed each of the vice president and the Speaker of the House a copy of his speech. Do you remember yeah, what she yeah. immediately did? Yeah. Ripped it up. Yeah, yeah. Just rude. Yeah, just rude. Yeah. It's not illegal. It's not it's just rude. You yeah. don't need to do that on national. It's television. a disrespect of the office. Absolutely. And, and it, I don't care if you are Joe Biden, who is is mm-hmm. on the verge of some sort of mental break. I don't care if you're Donald Trump, who is the to say biggest ego, ego uh, has probably the biggest ego that's ever graced yeah. Washington. Yeah. They earned their spot there. They got the majority of the vote. They got voted there. They earned that right, wrong, or indifferent. It's not them. It's It's not them you need to respect. mm, It's like you said. It's the office. office. Exactly. It's what I was getting at. So I agree 100%. 100%. I will say. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm done. I will say that for a guy that I have heard incessantly for the last two or three years is on his final leg. (laughs) <laughs> that he is uh, incapable of a coherent thought, that they keep him hidden from the press, that he, uh, I was actually told by this one guy, he's a pretty smart guy, but he told me a couple of years ago that he personally guaranteed me that Joe Biden would die, if elected, would die before. Of natural causes, of mind natural you. causes. He didn't plan on going and assassinate <laughs> Just want to make that yeah. perfectly clear that we didn't hear of an assassination attempt. No, no, no. <laughs> well, he, he thought Joe Biden was on his last leg and was not going to make it. So considering all that, I really thought that the speech last night was probably one of the best I've heard from him in years. It's amazing what B12 vitamins will do for a person. <laughs> that or meth or whatever he was on, but it, it was working. I'm telling you, he did a better job, literally. I thought he did a better job than going back even when he was on the trail, when he was running for... Do you think that helps him, though? 37%, only only 37% of Democrats want him to re-run, re, re, rerun in 2024 now. He was up to like 54, and that's numbers falling off. There's a lot of reasons for that, but a big part of it is his age. Oh, sure. He's 80 um, now, going to be 82. This year and uh, last year, he set the record for the oldest president to ever give us State of the Union address, and he's got one more to give under his current office and we're talking about him possibly getting another four yeah i don't wish to see him run for a lot of reasons not least of which is i think i don't don't think there should be a mandatory age i do think that he is past his prime and he's exhibited too many uh not necessarily dementia i don't think it's that although maybe possibly too many signs of, of problems with memory and other things cognitive like, and, and cognitive abilities physical abilities I just yeah i certainly hope he does it wrong. so but anyway i thought he did a pretty good job overall better than i expected and from what i've read today better than pretty much what anyone expected including fox yeah Not absolutely. That they thought he did a great job but the expectations were really low yeah there's a very low bar set so our title of this show is santos and balloons everywhere Balloons. Um, balloons, right? And I've been loving those ever since I was a kid. One thing we haven't talked about yet tonight, even yeah. though we are already over time, is sure. balloons. So let's make this quick. I love balloons. Huh? I love balloons. Here's the thing I always heard growing up, and I've often said, okay. there are two things that you cannot be sad when you have. Balloons and what? Cake. Cupcakes. If you have a cupcake or a balloon, I've never seen a sad person have a cupcake or a balloon. Absolutely. Um, but we're not talking about those balloons. Well, maybe. Maybe Xi Jinping <laughs> had a big birthday celebration 
And his balloons them. just got away. And they made one giant, huge balloon. No, no there's football size. There's balloons. there's another one in South America right now. So at least two balloons got away. Nice big balloons. Um, listen, and you and I were talking about this is what we were in the kitchen throwing things about. <laughs> um, because it's my belief, even though I'm clearly in the minority with our uh, our military military expert. leaders who think that it was okay for this foreign entity to fly through our airspace. I don't think it was okay. Uh, well, they allowed it to happen, and inaction Look is... Tell them why they allowed it to happen. I'm getting there. Why Good gravy. He's so <laughs> anti-Steve today. <laughs> you well, hate my guts today. today. Never hate your guts. <laughs> So our military thought it was wise to allow the balloon to float over our North Dakota and Montana nuclear sites and then take a flight down through Missouri over our stealth fighter base. And then finally, when it gets out of our country and heading into the ocean, we decide to shoot it down. Um, to his credit, Joe Biden actually wanted to shoot it down in Montana. That was the order that. As soon as he heard about it, kudos to you, Joe. I agree. I never thought I would say this, Jerry, on air. I agree with you, Joe Biden. I agree. What, what the hell? What the hell? <laughs> to steal Jerry's line. For real. Didn't make me have to agree with Joe Biden. Listen, here's a few statements from the Pentagon, okay? 100%. Now, this is according to US, U.S. News. Pentagon chief, 100% clear the Chinese balloon was a military craft. According to Politico, defense secretary, balloon was part of a wider Chinese snooping effort, according to the Pentagon. That's what we believe. Now, Pentagon, according to the Washington Post, China's conducted spy balloon programs for years. According to the Yahoo News, Biden says U.S.-China relations have not been damaged by the spy balloon. Are you kidding me? Um, well, they've been doing it for years. Why would this one suddenly damage our relations? Well, because this one got caught. You it know what I'm saying? Got caught. Just didn't get reported to the right people, apparently. Apparently. And that, that even, I'm glad you brought that up. <laughs> because one of the guys that I used to have a immense amount of respect for, General Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, military marine general. My son served under him while he was the head, what is that, the commandant of the Marines? Um, was reportedly to have said that there was at least three opportunities for these balloons to have flown during the Trump administration. In which time he didn't think it was a big enough threat to allow Donald Trump to know because he thought Donald Trump's reaction would be, um, what's the word, uh, overly aggressive. Um, that's really close to treasonous, in, in my opinion. He's the commander in chief. He he absolutely needs to know when there are foreign bodies floating through our airspace. Um, Huh? Totally agree. Um, you you don't have that right to say, oh well, this information isn't good enough, and just because we we're scared about what you might do, might do we we're not going to tell you. Um, also, while we're on it, Jerry, last week I had made mention that there was a hundred thousand troops in Romania. After mm -hmm. further research, that was wrong. There was a hundred thousand troops in yeah. all of Europe. And I apologize for that, and I want to correct myself on that, because that's what we do here at Newsworthy. We want to get it right. Absolutely. We don't want to make stuff up. Um, but anyway, I just... You're uh, not going to be like Trump? No. Okay. Or know. Joe Biden. Okay, making sure. You know, because... So anyway, if that actually happened, if General James Mattis decided not to tell Trump, I think he should be discharged and tried for treason. Well, he can't be discharged. He's already gone. Well, retired or whatever. But he should definitely be uh, tried for treason. Um, no, not treason. Uh, absolutely treason. When you your election of duties may be treason means when you don't have your country's best interest at heart. 
he could legitimately name a thousand things and say that this man has exhibited behavior that led me to believe that it was not in the United States' best interest. Do I think he's justified in saying it? No. Do I think he had America's best interest at heart? Yeah, I think he did. And I think you would have to admit that he probably had America's best interest at heart in a wrong way. But that means you can't charge him with when if you're going to charge him with treason. Well, I think that... Um, it's, it wasn't his job to make that decision. Absolutely period. not. No. no doubt about that. Um, so anyway, these balloons... And, you know, it took my 17-year-old to make a point to me, Jerry, that, that I brought up to you earlier. And, and it's, a, it's a what if. You know, we talked about the EMP and, and the most accurate to be the most effective... As a weapon, an EMP would be have to set off at what what level, and that level is between forty five and sixty thousand feet. Anything below it would be sheared off, gone. Be it uh, our nuclear silos, whatever, whatever the EMP hit, anything electric underneath its wind, its umbrella would be gone. Um, if it happened, Do you think that the balloon was capable of carrying that. I, I don't know that it wasn't. Well, according to all, every military expert, it was not. Well, sometimes when you have the biggest, baddest, most technologically advanced military in the world, you have to go very simple to be able to beat that technology. That's my guess. And an EMP carried in a balloon capable of igniting nuclear warheads? No, no. Simple? I didn't say night igniting. It wouldn't ignite a nuclear you warhead. Destroy. Yeah, incapacitate. Make them inoperable. That's what an EMP does. It just fries electric circuits. That's it. It doesn't do any physical damage to anything. I think you're giving, you, I think you're severely underestimating the capabilities of our military to do 500 flybys and to determine what equipment they had on board. I think that in one of those 500 flybys, we should have took the damn thing out. We did. <laughs> yeah, the, the last one. We did. It was <laughs> not a threat to civilian life. We did. Yeah, well, I, I, you know, and then we have since done nothing, including ch to do anything, to say anything to China about, hey, you need to control your balloons. Says the man who for the last three months has insisted that everyone in the world is agging us on to World War Three, not now, us. What does he want? He wants, er, apparently, Joe Biden and his administration to come down very hard on China. Here's the difference, and it's a very simple difference. Okay. Until this, every other nation in the world that's egging for a fight necessarily isn't egging us on. They're just egging each other on. Uh, Turkey and Greece, those are egging each other. Israel and Pakistan. Doing shit to anyone. Oh, I can I can show you reports that say they're at odds with other people they're trying to start. Odds. They don't have a military big enough to be. I'm just saying. The Minutemen of Massachusetts in Wausau County. <laughs> I'm not saying they do. I'm simply saying that they issued re in regards Poland I have no is idea trying to. Exist in Massachusetts. I don't either, but we'll say it does. Why okay. not? Um, it's the county just outside the county that had the tea party. There you go. They they had the le the the slightly less important uh, Boston um, coffee um, party where people oh. wore wore ball gowns. Yeah. <laughs> I like the analogy. Yeah. So, but basically, every country in the world is gearing up for something against somebody. I'm not saying they're all against us, but none of those countries have came to. And within our sovereign nation, this was. This was in our airspace. And you and I can go back and forth that satellites go over all the time. Sure, satellites don't have the capability of dropping an EMP on us. Or as my 17-year-old, who had a very legitimate fear, who's to say they're not shooting COVID 2.0 out of the thing? And I realize that at 60,000 feet, it's not going to get to the Earth. But that's coming. That's just fear from a seventeen-year-old who heard about this. You know what I'm saying? I do. 
Chinese, China doesn't have that right to make our children scared over their stupid balloons in our airspace. Neither does Russia, but you don't want us to do anything to stop them from reassembling the greatest threat to America that there's ever been. You think that a potential Russia 100 years from now... 100 years from now. ...is no, more a threat a than China but, right now. But a threat two years from now? Absolutely. Russia has shown and exhibited anti-U.S. behavior far more than China has ever begun to think of. Now, many of us, myself included, do not believe that China has their best interest at heart in any shape, Maybe. form, or fashion. Mm -mm. Russia has absolutely said they would love to see us annihilated, wiped off the face of the planet. Now, are you talking about Russians from today or Russians from the Cold War era? What makes you think that that has changed? What makes you think there's one bit of difference between the Russia from 20 years, 30, 40 years ago and Russia today? Well, I, they haven't done it. Because they haven't had the ability to do it since the dissolution of the USSR. But you want to help them reestablish I that. do not. I will say it one more time. And do I need to get crayons out for you, sir? Yes. Just because I do not support our involvement in the war in Ukraine does not in any way, shape, form, or fashion mean that I am pro-Russia or pro-Putin. Maybe not, but... I'll say it again for the guys exactly in the back. Putin won. No, I'm not you're doing anything that Putin wants. You're discouraging the United States government yeah. from taking any action to prevent him from reassembling the USSR. I am I am saying that we have got to stop being the police of the world and be the firefighters. And I, in your defense, I'll also say that we have to draw a line somewhere. I also thought that sending the Abrams tanks was going was crossing. Absolutely. In fact, our very own president said in March of last year said that if we send the tanks, it'll never happen because that's the beginning of World War Three. Totally agree. Forty-one tanks are heading that way. I don't know where the line should be. I do think we should try to prevent as much as possible without crossing the line. The USS or Russia from taking Ukraine, which to me would be the first giant step in reassembling the USS. Poland has already started to talk about sending F-16 fighters that they I bought know. from us to Ukraine. How long do you think it's going to be before we're sending f 16 Well, I would like to say it would never happen, but I said that about the tanks for a long time. I mean, if we're... If we're going to go to war with Russia over UK or Ukraine, excuse me, declare it and do it and be done with it. I, that's all I'm saying. You, if you're, I am so sick to death and no, tired it, of all this crap. Do you not think? Stop and look at Congress. Congress is immobile. So how long would it take to get anything through Congress? Yep. You're saying that's the, the route. I'm saying to go. that is the route the Constitution says no, we have to no. go. To declare <laughs> war, yes. But not to take actions that hopefully the, the President of the United States was given great power on an interim basis to make decisions on behalf of the United States to prevent catastrophic events from occurring. Joe Biden, along with Donald Trump and George Bush and Bill and every other president probably that's ever been, has made many such decisions. Mm -hmm. We know that part of that is because, like you just said, our Congress, even more so than before, but for many, probably 100, 150 years, has been basically immobile. No, they there's, there's been what? one example. There's been one, at least two well, situations that that wasn't the case. On a daily basis that we don't have. No, I'm saying December 7th, 1940. Once we're attacked, then whether it's 9-11 or Pearl Harbor Day, yes. Then There's then a difference no between that. making an emergency, and, and, and I'm not disagreeing that every president has abused that power. I'm, and, and I use that word against Republicans and Democrats. Well, I don't even know that it's but abused, listen, but when you read it, it's kind of what... The original intent was. Yeah, it was in it, the original intent of that law was to allow the president to yeah, make a latitude. split decision to get us to a point that we were stable enough to declare war or walk away. Now, consider we the can't fact, keep doing this crap. Considering the fact that, as you said in your words, Congress is immobile. We haven't given we, them a shot, Jerry. But but you've already said they're immobile. I don't care. If we turn it over to them, how long so, would it be before they come so to a decision? So let's drive to Washington. Let's go to the wherever it is. Let's take the Constitution and rip it up. No. Because that's what we're doing. No, we're not. 
We cannot allow the president to get us involved into wars that go on forever without a formal declaration of war. Period. What war are we talking about being in, actively involved in? Not one United States soldier is one hundred billion dollars, forty-one Abrams tanks. I don't know how many Patriot missile systems. I don't know how many uh, uh, freaking <laughs> how many freaking artillery units, um, heavy equipment, ammunition. If anyone, by the way, has. Uh link to a doctor that would be willing to come to this podcast to consistently monitor Steve's blood pressure. It would be great. I can literally sit here and have veins throbbing in his forehead watch it go up. So I'm just saying. We probably need Our president attention. doesn't have the right to continuously do war. We have the, the president should have has very limited power to prevent American ca- casualties. I agree to take it too far. And, but I don't know and, how you, and re- to get a stable problem. for Congress to make a decision. Here's the problem. How do you fix that without limiting presidents in the future from responding adequately to an, a real emergency? I don't, I don't, I don't know, know the answer to that. I don't know if it's monetarily. I don't know if it's the, the number of forces that you use. Um, but the, the number of forces is zero. We wouldn't have triggered that. If right. We were trying but to the monetarily, we probably monetary. could have. Yeah, I don't know. You know, it's just one of those things that what do you do? You know, it's the same thing with this China balloon. You know, the president says, hey, shoot it down. It's in Montana. And all the generals say, nah, it's fine. We'll shoot it down. against the Atlantic. Can I read something? Sure, please read it. Here's what the United States military said, basically. And actually, this one guy specifically said this. Why not shoot it down? We have to do the risk reward here, a senior defense official said on Thursday. So the first question is, does it pose an imminent threat, a physical kinetic threat to individuals in the United States and the U.S. homeland? Air assessment is that it does not. Does it pose a threat to civil aviation? I know you've got a story of how it possibly did at one point, but his answer was air assessment is it does not. Does it pose a significantly enhanced threat on the intelligence side? Our best assessment right now is that it does not. So given that profile, we assess the risk of downing it, even if the probability is low in a sparsely populated area of the debris falling and hurting someone or damaging property, that it simply isn't worth it. Now, that was the decision that, that, from what I've heard, pretty much unanimous decision of the United States military. So you're right. Biden heard about this and everything I've read was his first thing was shoot it down, shoot it down now. And the United States military talked him out of it. Uh, do I think it's the right decision? Here's what I think. I think that the military experts who we, I think at this point, have to trust, at least to some degree, made the decision they thought best and their president listened to them. Um uh, I was glad to hear that he was willing to take immediate action. I was also glad to hear that he deferred to the wisdom of the military. So I'm not against the decision to wait until it passed the homeland before they blow it up. Yeah, well, you and I have to do, agree to disagree. There's a lot of space out west that they could have blown the shit out of that and it wouldn't hurt anybody. Yeah, it depends. And it depends on how widespread the debris is going to fall. A big sure. Area. 65, I think feet, 13 miles up, that crap's going to come down over a huge Here's area. what I think happened. What's that? I think we waited till it got to the Atlantic Ocean because we thought if we take the balloon down in Atlantic, we can recover the info box that it had on the bottom once it hits the ocean. That's what I think happened. Absolutely. You think there's a black box? You think these people put a black box? You on yourself you? said the whole unit underneath the balloon was three football fields. No, this was not a school. It was three buses. Okay, three buses. school buses. Still pretty bang oh, big. Huge. So that's what we shot it down over the ocean for. It wasn't had anything to do with anything other than that. Um, but <laughs> that's my opinion. And since you just had to go, I'm right. Yes, Steve, you're right. I'm so wrong. <laughs> and I agree with you, Mochi. What if they just had a massive surprise, a supply of smelly socks in it? You know, it's right. It could be. We've gone 
so far over today. I just want to appreciate everybody for being here. Um, for our resident neighbor, Dennis, I hope that this, this has... Um, oh, there's my dog, Ramona. She's just barking at me through the window. <laughs> I hope that Dennis has been overly stimulated and pleased by um, our voices tonight. That would be awesome. Um, that's an inside joke. I apologize. I have to throw it out there. Guys, um, one real quick thing. I want you to listen to uh, our sponsor. Uh, this one quick message, and then we'll come in and close the show. I appreciate you. Hold on one second. Ed, thank you for that. We appreciate that awesome ad. Man, he did a good job on those, didn't yes, he? Yes, he did. <laughs> you gotta, if you guys knew Ed like I knew, he is a public speaker. Ed is not. So for him to come in and, and work with us to get those ads done, that was amazing. It was great. Um, by the way, Jerry, when you left there for just a second, uh, the we had about 6,000 call-ins, and they all agreed with me that I'm right and that uh, we should have banished the Chinese sock, dirty sock filled uh, uh, balloon into the nether regions of Canada. Well, I think everyone agrees we should. The question was where and how many civilian lives were we willing to risk. So mm -hmm. I'm not saying I know the answer. I'm just saying if I was the president, I probably would have deferred to the military experts. Yeah, yeah. And that's what they're there for, you know, yep. to be honest. Okay, well, we've done another show, Jerry. How about that? And you survived and gained no heart attacks. Nearly as much. We're good. Yeah, well, um, guys, we just want to again. We we don't do numbers here a lot. We've been. This is the uh, February eighth, I think. Right? Yeah, February eighth. We've already hit almost twenty two countries in the world in eight days. That's freaking amazing. Just say, what the hell is going on? And we just want to appreciate all our listeners, anyone who's had the time to stick in with us, to um, uh, be with us, to join us. Even if it's for a minute, you listen to us. We appreciate that so much. We love doing this. We try to get better every show. Um, if you have any suggestions, you have something you want to talk about, you have something you want us to talk about, email us, text us. Jerry, what's those addresses? Newsworthy with Stephen Jerry at gmail.com. The text is area code 540-709-1380. And with that, guys, if you can't see the light, be the light. Have a great night, guys. We'll see you next week.